Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you how to take a system of forces that are planar, and that's very important, and, and um, combine them and reduce them into a single force and a moment. Also, when we take that single force in a moment that represents the system of forces, as you see on the board here, we can actually move that force and have it also represent the moment so we can actually reduce it into a single force placed at the right place. And that single force placed at the right place will have the exact same effect on whatever body they act upon as the whole system of forces. That's what we mean by reducing a system of forces. So notice again, these are planar. They're in the X z plane so notice that this would be the x direction this would be the z direction and nothing is up into the y direction of course once we calculate the moment the moment will of course be in the y direction notice that all these forces will cause a counterclockwise motion on this object if you imagine this to be an object so we then have a positive torque in the positive z direction now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simply combine all the forces. So what we want to do then is we're going to have a resultant force, and the resultant force is simply going to be the vector sum of the three forces, force 1, force 2, and force 3, which means that the resultant is simply the sum of the x, y, and z components of each of the three forces. So this would be f sub 1 in the x direction plus f sub 1, uh, f sub 2, in the x direction plus f sub 3 in the x direction and that of course would be in the i direction for the resultant we do the same with the y components so f sub 1 in the y plus f sub 2 in the y plus f sub 3 in the y and of course these are the y components of the three forces times j plus f uh, f sub 1 in the z direction plus f sub 2 in the z direction plus f sub 3 in the z direction times k. So that will then give you the resultant force. And so imagine now that this resultant force looks like this. So let me draw that. Let's say that this is now the resultant force. And we'll cap the letter right here. And notice that the resultant force is also in the plane, in the xz plane. Now, that would be as if the resultant force is acting at point A. Now, notice none of the forces F1, F2, and F3 are acting on point A. So, say, so, well, wait a minute. That's not really possible, is it? Because these three forces actually do cause a moment or a torque about point A. So, we also have to account for that. So, we have to include to that the moment caused by those three forces. So, there's the moment about point A, and that would be the resultant. So sometimes we write it like this, we write M sub R A. So how do we get the moment of that uh, caused by those three forces? Well, that means that the moment, which is the resultant of the moment caused by each of the three, which is simply the position vector to the where the first force is acting, so that would be R1, multiplied via a cross product with the first force, plus the position vector pointing to the where the second force is acting multiplied times the second force plus the position vector to where the third force is acting multiplied times the third force and this will then give you the moment which is this moment right here so imagine that all three forces can, can be combined into a single force acting at A and of course we also have to compensate for the torque or the moment that these three forces cause and that can then be calculated as such. So now what we've done is we've taken those three forces and combined them into a single force and a moment. Now what we could also do is we could actually move that force. We can go ahead and move the force to a new location. So if that force is now acting, I mean the resultant of the force is now acting at some location there, it would then give the equivalent torque. So you can see that if I move this force, in a direction, in other words, I'm going to move the line of action of force. I have to keep the resultant force the same magnitude in the same direction. We can't change that. Otherwise, the, the force acting on the object would be different, have a different effect than the sum of the three forces that are there. But if I move it laterally away so that the line of action is parallel to the existing line of action, the magnitude of the resultant is the same, the direction of the resultant is the same. So what I'll do then is I'll move the resultant over here and I'll 
go ahead and put it as a dashed line so you can see the difference. So there's now the resultant but moved over this distance d. And so that would be distance d from there to there. Now what I've done is if this resultant force is acting at this location, this far away from the point A, then I'll get the exact same moment. In other words, this force now has the same, the same effect on the object as this force, as far as the force is concerned, and it has the same effect as this moment caused by these three forces. So simply this moment now will simply be the distance d multiplied times the magnitude of r will give us the magnitude of the moment over there. And so that's what, how we can essentially take the three forces right here, which forms a system of forces, into a single force, resultant force R, which has both the effect of the three forces in the plane sense, in the lateral sense, and it has the effect of the moment caused by the three forces all rolled up in one. So essentially, the three forces now become the single resultant force, also providing the moment of the three forces. And that's how we reduce a system of forces down to a force and a moment, and essentially down to a single force representing the effect both in the force and the moment of the three forces that are there. And that's how it's done.